verse 15. And Saul said, <laughs> you see, let me tell you something. Now, I want you to understand this. I understand something here. This is very, very vital. Hmm. You see, Saul hardly saw his errors. I want you to understand somebody like this. He cannot blame himself. They didn't, they didn't instruct, they didn't tell us early. They always, the reason for my not doing what I was supposed to do has to be somebody else. Look at the man. Samuel says, so what, what, what minute this bleeding that I hear and this lowing of the oxen that I hear? And he says, they, verse 15, and Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. They, he didn't say we. They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Did you hear that? They brought them, they brought them to sacrifice to the Lord. They, they brought them. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay, and I will tell you what the Lord had said to me this night. And he said, go on, speak on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight. That's why I'm thinking about some of you here now. You're playing with your office. You're playing with the instruction given to you. You're playing with the assignment given to you. But when you were first made that PCF leader or PCU leader or deacon or something, it was so big to you. You honored it. You revered it. It was important to you because you were little in your eyes. You have become too big. You have become too big. Now you can be corrected. Now you can be instructed. You have become too big. Too big. You can now decide. Whether or not to do it. By the time I finish, you will know whether this is of men or of God. Now, same book, same chapter. I'm reading his, his words. Verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but this fly upon the spoil, and this evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Oh boy, this is so painful, so painful. Look at it. Saul replied, Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed. It's painful. When a man no longer can see his errors, he has become so blind he can't see. I remember Samson. When Samson, when Samson was taken away by the Philistines and taken to the prison house, the first thing they did was to remove his eyes. When you are no longer acting with God, when you are no longer, when the Spirit of God departs from you, the first thing that the enemy does is to remove your eyes and you cannot see anymore. He lost his sight. He lost his sight. Every time you're in the wrong place, you lose your sight. Now here is the man Saul and he has lost his sight. He can't understand that he's done something wrong. He can't see it. Ah, but I came. Ah, but I did it. But I did. He can't see his error. He said, but I have obeyed. And it's obvious to anybody that he didn't. The instruction was clear. He flattered it. And now he says, but I have obeyed. He can't see it. If I've asked you for your report, you've been instructed, you've been told to send your report, and you sent nonsense in, or you didn't even send it, you should be ashamed of yourself. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, but I've done it, you're like Saul. You're like Saul. See, I pray to God, and I pray to God often. I don't want to become a professional. I want to be a Christian, not a professional. I don't ever want to become a professional preacher. Because it's easy to become professional. It's easy. You will know the Christian behavior. You will know all of those things. You will know the Christian prayer and the Christian worship and the Christian leadership. You know all of these things. But what you're doing may be empty. You may see results, you may win souls, but don't deceive yourself. 
if the word of God cannot dominate your spirit, if the word of God cannot bring that humility into your spirit, you have lost your sight. In the book of Revelation, he said, I know you. He said, I know that you have a name that thou livest, but you are dead. That's what he said. He said, I know you have a name that you are alive. I know you believe everything is all right. I know you think everything is fine. He said, but what you have is dead. Why? Because you are not acting according to the word. See, the Christian spirit, there's something about the word of God. You should be more than a miracle worker. You should be more than a preacher. It should produce humility in you. And humility has nothing to do with tears. Your faithfulness. It should produce in you a faithful spirit. That's what it should do. It should bring into you the fear of God. What kind of fear? We're talking about godly reverence. Godly reverence. That makes you to say the right words. There are words that cannot come out of your mouth. They just can't come out of your mouth. Insultive words can't come out of your mouth. And you become so humble. It doesn't matter who is chairing that meeting. You'll be there because you see the spirit of the Lord in that place. But when you have become too big, you say me. You have become you. Those in charge have become too small. But the day will come that God will exalt them above you. And because it will be by the hand of God, you can't do anything about it. Are you still in this place? There was a day that people who used to be with us came to church and the place was so small. You could put all of us on this platform. They looked here and they walked away. Only God knows where they would have been now. But they looked at us as insignificant and were ashamed of us. They were ashamed to be associated with us. They turned around and walked away. I only ask God to look upon it. For it's only a few years between then and now. Only a few years between then and now. Be humble in your life. Humility is not man's description of you. It's God's description of you. Did you hear me? It's God's description of you. Learn to be humble. Learn to be humble. Judas Iscariot accused Jesus of allowing a very costly ointment to be spent on him. But the next few verses, Judas sells Jesus for money. Isn't that right? I'm touched by God's response. Look at this. Let's go on reading. We're not through yet. Verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people, he still says it's the people, he doesn't think he's the one, but the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Oh boy, look at this. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You see, your attitude is very, very important. When you are corrected, what is your attitude? What is your attitude when you're corrected? Do you feel, how can they say that to me in the presence of all those people? In the presence of all those people, that's the thing that's paining me. Oh, what a shame. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. A man who has become a prisoner of the thoughts of others. A prisoner of the opinions of others. What a shame. Have you become a prisoner? Don't ever let yourself become a prisoner of the opinions of others. That when you are reprimanded or corrected, just because others are there, you reject the correction. I will show you this man's attitude. 
and then I will read someone else to you. But I want you to see it. Are you still here? A woman was with the daughter, and they went out. There were several people there. The girl did something that was wrong. And the, the mother hit her. Oh, she was so bitter. She was so bitter. Later, she was asked, what, what was the thing that offended you so much? She said, I don't mind my mother beating me at home. It's what she did to me outside that hurt me because people were there. What a shame. What a shame. She did not know the way of honor. That your mother could beat you in the presence of others is your glory. You see, human beings don't know. They don't understand the glory of God. They don't understand the wisdom of God. That your mother cannot talk to you outside is a shame. That she cannot reprimand you outside is a shame. It is said that it's only a child that is respectful that you beat. You know what that implies. The one that is not respectful will not only reject your correction, he will fight you. And he will do that to his own hurt, to his own destruction. But look at this man. Look at this man. Look at this man. This man Saul. Verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Watch this. Watch it. I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Yes! You know what Jesus said in St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 44? He said, those who are concerned about the honor of men cannot believe in God. In other words, they will not, they cannot obey. See, to believe is to act upon. They cannot act upon the word of God. Because they seek the honor of men. If you seek men's honor, you will not fully obey the words of God. If he instructs you, you will not fully obey. Because you're concerned about what others think about you. Because you're constantly fighting to present yourself an image that you have thought up. What you want them to think about you. But you have refused and failed to receive the honor that comes from God only. Brothers and sisters, it's only the honor that comes from God. That is worth it. That's all that's needed. Hallelujah. That's all that's needed. He says, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Now therefore, watch it. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. And, and as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord had rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and has given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me, I pray thee, before the elders of my people. See, because the elders were watching. The elders were there. And he had wanted to present himself to be somebody. You know, when, when, when Samuel came, he hadn't even asked Saul anything when Saul spoke up. I have just arrived. I have obeyed the, the word of the Lord. And his elders were with him. Now he's rejected and he's concerned about the people around him. He says, please, Samuel, please honor me before my elders. Please. He's concerned. And you know what? The Bible tells us that Samuel, Samuel was a smart man. He quickly turned around and joined him. You know why? The next chapter will tell you why. He knew that Saul had now become a wicked man. Because if the Lord turns away from a man, he cannot have the right spirit anymore. And he said to himself, if I don't do this, this man will kill me. Look at it in the next chapter. You would find that when the Lord asked him to go and anoint a man in the house of Jesse, and um, he, said, <laughs> he said to the Lord, if Saul gets to know that I'm in town, he'll kill me. That's what Samuel said. Why would he have thought that way? 
because he knew the Spirit of God had departed from Saul. Are you still in this place? Yes! Who was this Saul? He hoped that his good deeds would substitute for obedience. Yes. He hardly saw his own error. Instead, he argued with Samuel, insisting that he had obeyed. When he eventually accepted that something was wrong, what did he do? He blamed others for it. He never blamed himself. He blamed others for it. He would rather have others dealt with. He's surprised that the whole thing is coming on him when they were the cause. Let's look at another man by the name of David. David sinned against God on two major occasions. In the first one, when he numbered Israel, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Why do I share these things with you? For you to have wisdom, the wisdom of God. For you to be guided in your ways. For you to learn how to take your steps. These are the, see, there are many of you here. You became Christians after you were much grown up. You have never really read and studied from the Old Testament. You don't know what is there. Some of you have never really studied these things, stories, things that have to do with men and their characters, cities, towns, and countries. You never really studied these things. But these things are very vital. Because as you study them, you find God's dealings with nations, God's dealings with cities, God's dealings with men. You understand different kinds of characters and God's ways, God's attitudes towards their behavior. You understand. How does God see this? How does God see this? How does God see this? What are the implications of my actions? It's good to know, yeah, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, but does God care about the, my state of mind? Does he care about what's in my heart? Or can my heart just think anything? Is it okay? When you're talking about Christian growth, this is what it's all about. First, it brings you out. You know, it brings you out of the mess. But it doesn't want you to take the mess with you. If somebody fell into the gutter, talk to me now. This is a very rainy day. And the guy, he falls into the gutter. And it, there's a lot of mud in there. So somebody rescues him, brings him out of the mud. And then he comes in that condition. Will you put him in that condition on your bed? No. You're going to say, we, we've got you out of the mess. It's time to get the mess out of you. See, because we brought you out of the mess, but the mess is still on you. We've got to get the mess out of you. You understand? Now, after you're born again, see, you're like the man who's been brought out of the mess. But you see, your mind still has a lot of things it used to know when you were in the world. You still have those thoughts. Those desires may not be there, but you still have the imaginations. You still have the kind of things, the, the, the drinking. You don't drink anymore, but you still see the bottles. Your old friends are still there. The old temptations are still there. Back in those days, there were not temptations any, There were not temptations at all. You just, you just flowed with them. But now, they're still there. The things that used to offend you are still there. But now they're going to be temptations. They'll tempt you to want to drink them again. They'll tempt you to want to watch those films again. They'll tempt you to get angry that way again. They'll tempt you to do those things again. And a bona fide temptation can only come in things that you really want. But through the Word of God, through the study of the Word of God, and these things begin to get out of you. They begin to leave you. They leave you. But if you're not in the Word, if you're not being taught and brought up in the Word of God, these things will remain there. They'll be there and you'll never know it. Somebody says the choices of life, not the compulsions, reveal character. Now what does that mean? When you're free to choose, that's when we're really going to know what kind of a mind you have. Just because you see a lady with low cut doesn't mean she likes it. She may just be acting that way because her father says you're not going to make that hair longer than that, all right? Shortcut only. And so every time you see her in a shortcut, you think, oh boy, I really like her short hair. But the day she gets out of home, 
Like some of you young girls, you know what I'm talking about. You're in that school and they don't let you, they don't let you make your hair. You just comb it. Soon as you're through class five or your SS, is that SS3? Soon as they're through, you can't believe the hair change in 24 hours. That shows us what they really liked. But they were under obedience, under instruction, under authority, so they couldn't do it. There's some of you girls, you would love to wear trousers. The only reason you don't wear someone says, oh, I love that girl. She never wears trousers. She just wears skirts only. Maybe she hasn't gotten the money to buy it yet. You'd be amazed when she starts buying them. She doesn't use red lipstick. She doesn't, oh, I, I mean, I just love her. She doesn't have makeups. You don't know why. Wait till she gets a better job. You know what I'm talking about. See, I, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that there are certain things that are inside us and they don't show up until they are prompted. They don't show up uh, until their situation allows for them. So I, I'm, I'm actually looking at the other side. There are certain things that are wrong and they may be inside us in our mentality. And we have allowed them to stay. We haven't eliminated them with the Word of God just because we haven't studied the Word. The Word of God will throw light into your life. He'll show you the dark spots. He'll show you the hidden things that shouldn't be there. And as the word of God is brought to you as a light, you begin to see these things in you. And then you can get rid of the mess. But if you don't use the word, you will never know they are there until you're faced with the situation. You'll be amazed at the way you'll act. The ladies today, they got married to unbelievers and they can't tell why. They can't believe it. I couldn't believe I'll ever fall in love with my unbeliever boss. I can't understand it. I drank with him. I had sex with him. I can't understand it. But I'm a PCU leader. I can't believe it. I can't 